A big thanks goes out to Surfshark VPN for supporting my channel and keeping me connected to the world wide web as I continue my travels around the world. Hello, hello everybody. I hope you're all doing really well. Little mountain. You know, I've only ever been up here once uh, with my parents many years ago. We just drove up, but we didn't get out of the car. Uh, but the views up here are absolutely fantastic. And actually right here, just behind me here, there's a, a cliff. It's about 200 feet high. So uh, you definitely wouldn't want to fall off this mountain. But the views, if the light was really good, uh, I can imagine you get some nice landscapes up here. So why am I on Little Mountain? Well, I thought I'd come out here rather than talk in my office because it's not the, the nicest of uh, environments to, to film. And uh, I just wanted to do, introduce you to my latest video and that is my favorite images of the year. Now this is a, a video that I've put out the last couple of years and I thought I'd continue the, the uh, tradition. This time I'm going to try and condense it a little bit because last year it just went on too long, two videos. So without further ado, why don't we get right into my top favorites of the year. OK, 
Okay, my first favorite image of 2019 was one that I took at Huang Shan or Yellow Mountain. Now, I'd never really had much interest in going to China. Uh, it wasn't until I saw a video from my good friend and photographer, Alistair Ben. He'd taken some drone footage of the Gobi Desert. So my partner Karen and I went to China to photograph the desert. But in the meantime, we also decided to travel to a couple of other areas and Huangshan was one of those areas. And I absolutely loved it there. So much so that uh, we went to Huangshan, then the Gobi Desert, and then we went back to Huangshan for more photography. And this was on the, uh, the second trip there with Karen. Uh, the weather started to turn for the worse and the snow started to come down. And just before we got socked right in, I took this shot of these just absolutely stunning granite peaks poking out of the fog. And if you look carefully at this image, uh, there's lots of snow coming down. So it gives it a, a great feeling. Uh, I just love that monochromatic feel and those peaks just poking up through the, uh, the low-lying clouds. Favorite image number two. This image here really stood out to me as one of my better uh, sand dune photographs from the Gobi Desert. Now, there were a number of Gobi Desert images that I wanted to put in my favorites, but I just can't have all Gobi Desert images. It could have been because the Gobi Desert is just such a different environment to what I'm used to photographing. Uh, it was just so isolated, uh, desolate, uh, I, I just absolutely loved it. This image stood out to me because of the lines going throughout the uh, the frame. I really like the composition in this. Uh, it has so many different elements in there that work well together. Those edge lines of the dunes and how they crisscross the frame uh, just really appeals to me. Favorite image number three. This image here again was from the Gobi Desert in China, uh, but it's quite a bit different than a lot of the other photographs that I took on that trip. Most of them were more or less pattern shots of uh, the sand dunes. But when we went and visited this little area here with these cottonwoods uh, kind of dotted around in the landscape, I just absolutely fell in love with the stark contrast of these trees uh, surrounded by these massive dunes. Now, of course, we were there in the winter, so they didn't have their leaves, so it just added more to that starkness. Uh, to my eye, the trees really uh, stood out nicely, uh, compositionally wise. We had a nice grouping on the, on the left side, and then those two individuals on the right just seemed to work for me. And then the foreground, uh, I purposely uh, blurred it out or made it, made it so that it was out of focus because I really wanted to draw the viewer's uh, attention to those trees. What is Surfshark VPN, you may ask? Well, during my travels throughout China, I discovered that surfing the internet is not quite as easy as it is in Canada. The internet in China is quite restricted by the government, and if I wanted to surf the internet as I normally would, I would have to use a VPN, or virtual private network, such as the one offered by Surfshark. 
A VPN allows you to connect to any server throughout the world and that enables you to bypass restrictions. This also includes the ability to visit websites that you might not be able to visit in your own country. As an example, if I'm looking for cheaper airline tickets uh, for China, I could log on to a network uh, in another country and check out their prices. And in many cases, you can get cheaper deals. Interested? Then head over to surfshark.deals forward slash quiet light and enter the code quiet light for 83% off and three months of Surfshark VPN for free. My fourth favorite image is a photograph that I took on the Isle of Staffa. Now the Isle of Staffa is just off of the coast of the Isle of Mull in Scotland. And to be honest with you, I really didn't think I was gonna get any great photographs that day because we only had an hour on the Isle of Staffa. But I did manage to come away with this photograph of these basalt columns in an area called Fingal's Cave. Now, Fingal's Cave is just a remarkable area, and I know that Gavin came away with a really nice shot from inside the cave, but I decided to stay on the outside and just f concentrate on the layers and the, and the different heights of these basalt columns. So I was really happy with this photograph. I did have to do quite a bit in Photoshop to kind of direct the viewer's attention more to the center of the image rather than the, the, uh, the outer left side. It's just a remarkable area and uh, I'm really looking forward to going back and spending a bit more time there this coming May. Favorite image number five. This past year, I spent quite a bit of time in Carmana Provincial Park and the surrounding area. Now Carmana, for those of you that aren't familiar, it's uh, an area on the west coast of Vancouver Island. It's quite uh, wild back there, but it also happens to be one of my favorite areas to visit. On this particular trip, I went in with my friend Jeremy and it was pouring with rain, it was gloomy, it, uh, we didn't really have any prospects for great photography, but we went and tried anyway, and we ended up on the shores of Cowichan Lake. And as soon as I saw this scene, I just fell in love with the whole composition and knew that I would make it work somehow. Now, as a color image, it's not particularly that interesting, but as a sepia tone, I really love the graphic lines of the trees leading you in to that central island in the distance. And also the clouds really helped in this, uh, in this case because the island is well separated from the background. I have gone back since and tried to photograph a scene similar to this, but it doesn't quite work unless there's clouds in the background to give it that separation. But overall, I really love this image. I have this version and another one in a more of a, a blue tone as well. Both are, I, I love e equally as much. Favorite image number six. This image I actually took on the same trip as the last photograph of Cowichan Lake. And what I really loved about this whole scene was, was the challenge of actually coming away with a photograph. It was such a huge mess in there that I, I really didn't think that uh, I'd be able to get a, a decent photograph. After scrutinizing and scrutinizing for quite some time, I finally came up with this photograph of part of a, a big leaf maple, a huge branch that was coming down covered in mosses. And then it started to uh, snow as well. So I have this ethereal look in the background of this photograph caused by that snow falling. I just love situations like this. The, the light wasn't particularly great, 
but I really enjoy the composition in this. I just love the sweeping lines of those branches and the foreground branch kind of mimics the branches in the background. They all kind of lean over to the left. Uh, I, I don't know, for whatever reason, I just really enjoy this photograph and it really conjures up some great memories of that area. Favorite image number seven. Again, another image from Carmana Provincial Park. This was another trip that I took with my friend Jeremy, uh, except this was in the summer and it was actually on a long weekend. And uh, generally speaking, traveling around the island on a long weekend is not a great idea, especially in the summer uh, because the place just gets packed with uh, tourists. But we decided to go to Carmana anyway. Uh, because it's quite a ways out on the west coast of the island and it was a great time to go because we didn't see anybody out there even on a long weekend. So this composition here I've taken a number of times in the past going back as far as 12 years ago. I just for whatever reason I just love this group of trees and I love this gap between the, the four uh, Sitka spruce here with the sword ferns at the base of them. I think this is probably one of my favorite of the series from this composition just because it had such uh, wonderful light. We had some fog in the background and every now and then the fog would move in just a little bit enough to add some atmosphere to the, the scene and in this case we had a little bit of sunlight come through as well. So it really adds to the, uh, to the composition. <laughs> Favorite image number eight, the Ramparts, Tonquin Valley, Jasper National Park. You know, I've been to Tonquin Valley quite a few times now and every time I just absolutely love it in this area. It still holds that true wilderness essence that uh, many of the parks used to have. Not so much as uh, they used to, there's just so many more people visiting the national parks these days that it's getting harder and harder to get away from the crowds. But Tonquin Valley still holds that true wilderness feel. I've photographed this scene many times in the past and I'll probably continue to photograph it. What I really enjoy about this whole scene is just those tufts of golden grasses in the foreground. And then of course, if you're lucky enough to get a little bit of light on the mountains in the background, it just makes the whole trip worth it. This was a, an image that I took in uh, 2019 and it was probably my favorite from the area this year. Who knows, maybe next year I'll have another image from there. Favorite photograph number nine. Now stalactites are quite common uh, with icicles. You know, usually they hang down from ceilings, but stalagmites are very unusual. Well, I've I've never seen any. And these particular icicles here, some of them were almost two meters high, which was just incredible. Now I have to thank Gavin for showing me this area. It was an area in Kootenay National Park called Hafner Creek, and. I'd heard about it, but I'd never been in there before. So Gavin uh, took myself and Tom Eaton in there and we stayed in there until quite late. And then we got some lights out and started lighting it with artificial lights. Now I did take some images of the whole cave, which I'm quite uh, happy with, but I really, 
like this image here, the close-up of these icicles. Uh, it's just fascinating. And I love the light and, and the different shades of blue in there. So I added it to my favorites more because of the unusual nature of the subject matter than anything else. Favorite image number 10. What can I say? I think out of all of the photographs that I'm showing you uh, in this video, this one is probably my favorite. I just love the ghostly nature of this tree. It almost looks like an x-ray. Now this was a photograph that I took this past winter uh, when I went on a trip with Gavin Hardcastle, Tom Heaton and Nick Page. And we'd gone into an area called Abraham Lake to photograph uh, these bubbles that kind of form underneath the ice and then you have the mountains in the background. And it's a really cool area, uh, but the conditions weren't all that great when we got there. So I decided to wander off and, and concentrate on other subject matter. And I'm so glad that I did. The lighting in, in this uh, image is quite unusual in that even though I'm in the shade, it was bouncing light off snow that was lying on the on the ground beneath the tree. That's, so that's why it has this unusual light on both sides of the of the trunk there. I purposely uh, used a very shallow depth of field, a long lens to kind of blur out that background. Uh, so you can just kind of make out the trees in the background, uh, but they're nice and blurry. And then the foreground tree was quite a ways from that forest. So it was well separated. But I really love this image uh, just for the, for the colors in the image, the slight blue color and uh, the simplicity of it. Favorite photograph number 11. All right, this one is fresh off the press. Some of you may recognize it from a video just a few weeks ago at Wiener Falls uh, near Port Alberni on Vancouver Island. I really love this photograph. And again, I have to thank Gavin for pointing out the subject matter. I did see it when we kind of came down the hill towards the falls, but uh, he jumped on it straight away. So I kind of just waited in the background until he was finished. And then I, I decided to take my own photographs. I'm not sure what Gavin took from this area, uh, but I was really happy with this photograph. Now I have two variations. I have this one with the falls in the background that are sharp, and I have another variation where the falls uh, are more blurry in the background. I don't really have a huge preference for either one. Uh, I just thought I'd put this one in. Uh, I love the uh, just having that waterfall in the background with these beautiful mushrooms. And then, of course, I used a bit of uh, bounce light to uh, get some of those shadows opened up in the in the bottom bottoms of the uh, of the mushrooms. <music> Final favorite image number 12. Now, throughout this video, all of the photographs that I've shown you, I have a corresponding video that I've made, and I'll leave a link to each of those videos in the description below. But this image here, I didn't make a video. This was actually taken uh, when I had a, a really great couple from Texas come up and visit to do a one-to-one. -one. Now, unfortunately, the weekend before I took this, I had uh, a photography workshop in the same area, and we all went to photograph this little tree on Ferry Lake, but the weather wasn't that great. 
So it wasn't until two days later when we got these just absolutely fantastic conditions on Fairy Lake in Port Renfrew. Now this little tree has been really good to me over the years. I've taken dozens of images of the same tree in all kinds of conditions. The lake itself is actually part of the San Juan River and the San Juan River this close to the ocean is tidal so the depth of the lake fluctuates by the minute so sometimes you might go to this area and you won't even see the tree and then other times it'll be well out of the water it's actually growing on an old growth stump in the middle of the lake a few years ago i ran into a fellow that ran the campground uh, next to this little lake and he was telling me that this little tree here has been growing out of that lake on a stump for the past 30 years. Okay, if you made it this far, thank you very much for sticking with me. I really hope that you enjoyed uh, looking at my favorite images for 2019. And uh, I guess, uh, 2020 will go pretty quick so expect another video uh, next year all right everybody thanks ever so much for watching i appreciate the support if you enjoyed the video please be sure to give me a thumbs up and as always if you enjoy the content of my channel be sure to subscribe all right till next week bye for now mm -hmm.